This study is a study that was published in 2015, and it was really looking at Invitae's multi-gene panel. And what they did is they had a little over 1,000 individuals uh, who had already had traditional genetic testing. And they looked, first of all, at how their panel compared to what their traditional testing showed. And you know, the important thing is, in the, in, when you're looking at these multi-gene panels, is somebody was found to have a BRCA1 or BRCA2 mutation on standard testing, did the panel actually find it as well? And the first thing is that there was a very, very high concordance. The people who tested positive by traditional testing tested positive on this multi-gene panel testing. The people who tested negative for deleterious mutations tested negative, and the concordance was close to 100%, 99.8% or, or, or so in terms of the findings. So that suggested that, that Invitia's panel could accurately figure out whether people had deleterious BRCA1 two mutations or not. And then the other thing, because obviously most of the people who had had traditional testing had just had you know, one or two genes tested previously, um, was what does a multi-gene panel uncover aside from that? And they found a fair amount of variance. So a fair, when we say a variant, we mean a different finding from normal. Now, what could that mean? That has lots of different interpretations when you're doing genetic testing. A, a variant could be important, could be clinically important. It could be a deleterious mutation. A variant could be entirely inconsequential, just an alternate spelling of the gene that has no impact, what's called a benign polymorphism, or it could be like we're not sure, which is what a variant of uncertain significance is. And so what they found was that there were a lot of variants that they were finding when they do multiplex testing or multi-gene testing. And um, it, it, they classified them, and through their techniques, they were able to classify them well but it also brings up one of the conundrums and one of the issues when we're thinking about multi-gene panel testing is that we get more variants of uncertain significance. The more you test and the more things ha haven't been tested before, the more questions come up for the time being. And it speaks to the incredible importance of us having uh, publicly available databases so that those variants can be reclassified over time. So we're not left with question marks for too long. And, Certainly our experience with BRCA1 and BRCA2 testing, we turned the clock back 20 years when we were starting to, to test, we were finding all these variants in BRCA1 and BRCA2, and the rate of variant detection plummeted over the years because we gained information about which variants were important and which ones were inconsequential. So we're beginning to see studies that address the practical utility of results from multi-gene panel testing, and there have been a couple of important reports here. Uh, Allison Currian at Stanford reported a couple years ago now on a very interesting group. Now, these were high-risk women. They were all being referred for hereditary breast or ovarian cancer counseling. They had had BRCA1 or 2 testing that was negative, and then they did panel testing to look for mutations in other genes. And in that work, they found that about 15% of women had a mutation in one of these other genes. So if you take a high-risk group, you might find mutations in about 15 out of 100 women who don't have BRCA1 or 2 mutations. And that's probably a high enough number that it warrants uh, more broad uh, panel testing for women once the BRCA1 and 2 genes are negative. There's been other work with uh, other assays. The Invitae assay has been studied. They took a less heavily selected group of women, about 1,000 patients. Uh, they excluded those patients who had known BRCA1 or 2 mutations. And then they looked and they saw what's the likelihood of finding a mutation in these breast cancer patients um, who didn't have that dramatic family history, uh, though they had, of course, been referred for genetic testing. And in their study, about 5% of the cases turned up with a mutation on panel testing. Now, historically, we've been recommending hereditary breast cancer testing when the likelihood seems to be about 10%, maybe drifting down to 5%. So it suggests that even in relatively unselected groups of women, there's a merging a critical mass of data for these multi-gene panels that approximates the kind of frequency we see with BRCA1 testing in similar patients. Um, so the panels that were used in some of these uh, tests are very similar, actually. Um, again, where they differ or what, exon what genes are actually sequenced. Uh, what's actually annotated, what's a variant of unknown significance. I think to me, I mean, there's a lot of other more minor differences, but to me, uh, the biggest difference in all of this and some of the tests that were already done uh, had to do with the annotation of the genes. And what they found in this particular study, among others, there's a number of studies like this now, uh, where they've actually done uh, multi-panel gene testing. Uh, and they found a number uh, of variants that actually appear to be pathogenic uh, that were not realized uh, in that. Um, now the issues really are, 
Um, you know, I think those trials were done a couple of years ago, or those analyses were done a couple of years ago. And again, our annotation of those genes is much different now than it was before. Uh, and so therefore, we have a lot, well, we still have a lot of variants of unknown significance, but actually what we have now are a lot of variants that we know are either deleterious or not. Um, and I think that's probably, to me, the biggest difference in all of these studies uh, that have been done. But the bottom line, uh, I think, is that uh, uh, multi-gene testing and multi-gene panels uh, do have their benefits, um, but they do have their drawbacks. I think it's going to be uh, really an informed decision that both the patient and the physician has to make uh, when they uh, actually ask for one of these tests and try to interpret it. Uh, because on the one hand, we're going to get a lot more information a lot more quickly. Uh, but on the other hand, again, we're going to get variants of unknown significance, and I think it's really important um, that uh, whatever panel you use, um, their annotation of the variants of unknown significance uh, needs to be as kind of uh, uh, firm and as uh, uh, solid as it can be.